around DeSantis. It's off the campaign trail, obviously, this week to deal with the state's response, recovery to Hurricane Idalia. Represents a, another uh, either test or opportunity, depending on your point of view, as he pushes his record and his competence as governor of Florida to try to make it the centerpiece of his campaign. Let's do a little politics here at the end of the show. Join me now on set. Benji Sarlin, Washington Bureau Chief for, for Semaphore, an NBC News political unit alum. Eugene Robinson, Washington Post columnist and an NBC News political analyst. And Danny Pletka, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and a friend of NBC News. So there. So there. Uh, look, Benji, these moments, um, they can... Uh, look, I think Jeb Bush got his brother reelected in Florida uh, in 2004 with his competence in, in many ways. It sort of sealed the deal. You can... You can, you can accomplish a lot. You can really send the message of competency or incompetency when it comes to storms. Absolutely. Jeb Bush is one of the first politicians you think of with someone who benefited mm -hmm. from disaster politics. I think they called him the hurricane governor. And certainly... Four in one year. I mean, yeah, it was I think just, it was nine it during his choice. entire governorship. Yeah. It was just over and over yeah. and over again. And it was funny, even years and years later when he ran for president and I talked to voters in Florida, it would be the first thing they'd bring up. Oh, we love Jeb Bush. Now, how did good that was, translate? Was that Barack Obama hired... Jeb Bush's FEMA uh, emergency coordinator to run FEMA. Of course, who had better credentials, right. right? Now, the flip side of that is you might have surging approvals in your state. People might remember it. Does that translate right. anywhere else? I mean, Jeb Bush found out not so much. People aren't always interested in hearing how you did in some other state. Mm -hmm. In Chris Christie's case after Sandy, it was even a negative in some ways because Republicans yeah. saw him as too close to Obama during the response. Well, and we've seen this, you know, Danny, I remember, look, Hurricane Andrew recovery became more politicized as we went a second, a third, and a fourth week without power. Like, sometimes these things all go well in the first week, and then all of a sudden, hey, where's the cavalry? What yeah. isn't politicized now? I well, mean, we are yeah. talking about the politics of the weather at this point. So <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to bet that, that for DeSantis, however, uh, this is his sweet spot. He's, he's well-liked in the state of Florida. He's competent at this sort of thing. No man doesn't like putting a windbreaker on and getting out there yeah. with the reporters, the wind in his hair, looking and like a hero. And he's political. Like, he doesn't play politics nope. either. I've noticed that, like, when he's been with Biden, whether they, they, don't, no, when, they, they don't. They don't know that there's punishment to be had if you do it. Right? No, but, um, I mean, thank heaven for small favors, right? I mean, I mean, really, you're not supposed to do politics when, you know, when I know, hurricane always, Hey, thank hit. goodness they acted like adults. Exactly, they <laughs> acted like adults. I mean, uh, look, we're, we are fortunate with this hurricane, right? It, it, it hit in, a, in probably the least if you populated pick, coastline. I, it's a weird way to say it. If yeah. you could pick the one place to do the least amount of potential widespread damage. Exactly. With a hurricane hitting Florida coast. I don't, that, don't tell that to Horseshoe Beach. I, I don't. Exactly. I, I but don't, I, and, I, and my heart goes out to those people. But there are not as yes. many of them as there would be any place else on the Florida coast. Um, and, and so, I, you know, in a sense, we, we dodge a bullet. We should be thankful for that. We are. I'm petrified for our friends in Charleston, though. I mean, this is just such a bizarre yeah. circumstance, high tide. Charleston's stuff. Gonna, Charleston's it's one of those, you know it well. Flood. I don't Charleston think we, floods, it floods when the sun shines, right? It floods when the sun shines yes. and it's humid and it's South high Carolina tide, maybe. you know? I mean, it's, it's so, so it's going to really flood. All right, let me pivot to what would have been one of the lead stories all day today. Um, it's Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, mm -hmm. another, uh, another moment, uncomfortable moment where he pe appeared to freeze. Let me play a bit of it. That's okay. What are your thoughts on running for re-election in 2026? Running for re-election in 2026? Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? Yeah. All right, I'm sorry, you all. We're going to need a minute. Things I want to say here. McConnell aide said he momentarily felt lightheaded, but now feels fine. Um, and apparently, he's talked to uh, Benji, John Thune, John Barrasso. Their spokespeople say, "Hey, he sounded like uh, Mitch McConnell in there, second time in a month." Yeah, and it sounds extremely similar uh, to the previous one too, where he also was able to talk to reporters even later that same day. But it, you know, it played out. It looked looked identical. But it's just reinforcing the reality here. He's an 81-year-old man who suffered a, a serious fall earlier this year. And 
I'm sure everyone in the Senate, including those people you named, who are often named as his potential successor, are thinking about what, what comes next. Gene, every time this comes, he's a year older. Than, yeah. He's only one year older than, than yeah. the president. He's right. only three years older, four years older than, years older than, older than, than the former president. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is just, it's, yeah. it, well. it's going to, as I say, our job is to observe and report sometimes, and this is, we're, we're observing and we're reporting. We're, and it's very, very difficult to look at. It, it, it really is. Um, uh, it's, you know, this can't, one assumes this can't continue. I know he's getting the best it medical probably shouldn't care. Conti is it in the best interest of the Senate or the Senate Republicans? I don't, it's hard to say. Um, I don't, no, it's not in the best interest of the Senate or the, or the country. It's, it's not, I can't imagine it's in the best interest right. of Mitch McConnell. Um, uh, you know, to have these episodes yeah. uh, like that. And and just, if, even if he's just thinking about his legacy, is this not the way he would want to go out? Danny, I mean, it's, these are all uncomfortable conversations. They are uncomfortable conversations, and it was really awful to watch. My heart goes out to him and to his family as a human being. You know, this is the, but, but this is increasingly the way we feel when we watch all of our senior most politicians. Well, How old is Chuck Schumer? Right. He's in his mid-70s. Right. No, I think yeah. he's, you know, right. Yeah. He's creeping up to 80. Yeah. How old was Nancy Pelosi? She's over How old is Joe Biden? How old is Donald Trump? Maybe it's time for us to start talking about a moment when we need a newer generation. Maybe there should be age limits. This is not an unpopular thing, um, the age limits question. You ask it, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it, it gets yeah. there quickly in more moments like this, and it's there. And the White House doesn't like to hear this, but every time Mitch McConnell has a bad moment like this, this doesn't help the president. No, it does definitely fit this theme, and you've seen some politicians seize on it. Mm -hmm. um, Nikki Haley, for example, is a politician whose style you very well might associate with Mitch McConnell was pretty shockingly blunt the last time this happened with him and saying this just shows we need, you know, a new generation. It, there's definitely, you see some politicians starting to send something's in the water. I, look, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't, I don't know how the party's going to handle this, Danny, but if you told me there were public resignation calls now, it wouldn't surprise me. It was the second episode with Dianne Feinstein, where you saw Democrats yeah. start to call on her to resign. I think it's much more a question of the conversation he's going to have privately in his caucus about what it is that neurologists say is going on, mm -hmm. what is really happening. What is the, is this just an episode or is there something more? And, and, and I think there's something more important. There is nobody in this town more of a political creature than Mitch McConnell. Yeah. He is such a political creature. And so even if he thinks the time is right, even if he wants to step down, he's going to be figuring out what's the right juncture, when do we move, what's right. good for the party, what's mm -hmm. good for the Senate. But when you think about everything that has to happen, we're running out of time. If you're the White House, no matter what you think of Mitch McConnell, you want to try to do government funding without Mitch McConnell there? Yeah, you right. want to try to sort of right. get through? That's not, that's not something they would look forward to. Um, no, it's it would start. make things, everything that's going to be harder without Mitch McConnell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone's taken him for granted so long, it's hard to imagine mm -hmm. what comes after. Yeah, whatever you think of him, when it comes to just getting the trains to run on time. Yeah, but life happens. Though. Life happens. Life happens. Benji, Eugene, Danny, thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.